Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I must say it's a real pleasure to be here this afternoon, to be given this opportunity um, by Mutio. And I do hope that you find the panel discussion informative and, and stimulating. At the FSA, I head up our work on building societies and credit unions, and I, I work hand in hand with Eleanor Linton, who leads our work on mutual insurers. I wanted to just quickly touch on three items today, really to just look at the background for regulatory reform, update everybody where we are in the legislative process, and then perhaps provide some thinking on our current aims and objectives for the new regulatory bodies. So where are we in the regulatory reform process? If we go back to 2010, it was a key plank of the Conservative Party manifesto that there would be regulatory reform if they came into power. When the coalition government put forward its coalition statement, the regulatory reform legislation was a key element of that as well. And in the summer of 2010, the current government announced the legislation it was going to be putting forward. They set out that there would be three new bodies coming into play. One is a new financial policy committee. That will be residing in the Bank of England, and that will have responsibility to maintain financial stability here in the UK. The second body will be the Prudential Regulation Authority. That will be a subsidiary of the Bank of England, and that will have responsibility for prudential regulation of all deposit-taking institutions, insurers, and investment banks. The final body will be the Financial Conduct Authority, which will be responsible for regulating the conduct of business in retail and wholesale markets. And it will also be responsible for supervising the trading infrastructure that supports these markets. The FCA will be the successor body of the FSA, and most of the FSA's current staff and infrastructure will be transferring to the FCA. However, a part of the FSA will be moving to the Bank of England to become the Prudential Regulation Authority, and this will include Eleanor and myself. We are both part of the team leading the design and the development of the operating philosophy for the PRA. This so-called Twin Peaks style of regulation separating prudential and the conduct of business regulation has been adopted by a number of countries across the world. The benefits that it brings is a clear focus of one body on prudential matters and another body on conduct matters. And you may actually comment this has been something the FSA has seen as to be a challenge over the years of its existence. It does, however, create the disadvantage that for small banks, building societies, credit, credit unions and insurers they will in future have to work with two regulatory bodies. So bring us up to date, where are we at this present point in time? The draft bill was published in the summer and is currently in the pre-legislative scrutiny phase before being passed to Parliament for its first reading, which is currently anticipated to be in early 2012. Mapping out the legislative timetable beyond that it appears that there'll be another 15 to 18 months before the new regulatory structure will become effective in early 2013. The pre-legislative scrutiny committee is currently taking evidence from a range of interested parties from here in the UK and also from other regulators across the world who have this experience of Twin Peaks regulation. All of the trade bodies have submitted um, really well thought through papers to this and pre-legislative scrutiny committee and we as the FSA have also submitted our opinions and our chief executive and chairman will be giving evidence to the committee. All of the papers that have been submitted and the oral evidence are now public documents and if you really want to keep up to date with things as they're progressing on a day-to-day -day basis these are available for you to view. So if I may now turn to how our thinking is evolving on the objectives of the new regulators and how we will turn this into day-to-day -day supervision. Unfortunately, I'm not able to give you definitive statements today. And these can only be made once the pre-legislative scrutiny process has been completed and its recommendations have gone forward to the draft bill to Parliament. What I would like to do is just outline where the thinking of Treasury, Bank of England and the FSA is developing because clearly we've got to try and anticipate the legislation when it is actually published so that we're able to complete the implementation by early 2013. 
Our thinking has recognised the concerns that you have as regards the potential increased burden of having two regulators. And to achieve effective and efficient coordination between the two will really be vital to the success of the new structure. We have also supported the government's requirement that any future policies developed by any of the bodies must have specific regard to the impact on mutuals. And this is something that's not a requirement of the FSA today. Perhaps if I can first turn to the FCA, although I'm very limited to what I can say about the FCA because my chairman Adair Turner is speaking tonight and I was left with very strict instructions not to front run any of his speech um, so I don't actually spoil it for the members of his audience tonight. At the heart of the government's draft legislation for the FCA is achieving better outcomes for consumers. As many of you know, the FSA's approach has been primarily reactive with a focus on disclosure at the point of sale, which for many consumers has not provided the right outcome. The FCA will be seeking to look at markets and make judgments on whether they are working in the consumer's interests. It will be looking at product design rather than point of sale disclosure. It will want to intervene earlier with firms to prevent the widespread consumer detriment that perhaps we've seen in a number of instances over the last 10 years. From a supervisory perspective, the FCA has indicated that probably all of the firms represented in the room today will not have a relationship manager. They will be seeking to work on a thematic basis across the industry to tackle issues rather than working on a firm by firm basis. Moving to the PRA, we will have a single objective which will allow us to focus on promoting the safety and soundness of firms that we will be regulating. Key elements of the PR's, PRA's regulatory approach would be to ensure that firms do business in such a way that the adverse effects um, can be avoided on the UK financial system and to reduce harm to the system in the event that any firm should fail. Crucially, we will not strive to avoid failure of firms at any cost. Through a combination of policy, supervision and work to improve the UK's revolution, um, revolution, resolution infrastructure, we will seek to ensure that all firms we regulate can fail, can be closed down or run off in an orderly manner so that there is limited or no impact on the financial system. Although the, the PRA's approach to prudential supervision and monitoring safety and soundness firms will vary accordingly to the, sound, to the size of firms, it will be very different to Barclays, for example, to the smallest credit union. We will be undertaking baseline monitoring for all firms. Our style of supervision will be judgment-based and will be forward-looking. And therefore, we accept that our judgments might not be aligned with yours with regard to your firm. However, the inherent uncertain nature of many firms' liabilities, especially those of insurers, we consider this really is the only basis on which we can operate. However, if we are going to operate on this basis, we do recognise that we need to provide a context to our judgments and therefore we'll be introducing a new tool, a proactive intervention framework. This will be calibrated in five stages with corresponding regulatory actions with each stage. We do anticipate that the vast majority of firms will be at stage one within this, within this supervisory process. But some firms that do have inherent weaknesses in their business model will be at higher stages and those at closure or runoff will be at level five. The nature and intensity of the PRA's supervisory approach to your firm will be, as I've mentioned, commensurate with the level of risk that we consider it poses to the system here in the UK. I do, however, anticipate that the PRA criteria for those firms that will have a relationship manager and those that won't will be broadly similar to where the FSA is today. We will not be implementing a reduction in relationship management as indicated by the FCA. The PRA will seek to assess whether, on the balance of risk, there are vulnerabilities in firms' business models, capital and liquidity positions for banks. We'll be looking at governance, risk management and controls to really see, does this cast a doubt on the future financial soundness? The focus of supervision will be going beyond compliance and checking of rules. To drive this, we will be introducing a completely new risk assessment framework 
which will re replace the FSA's current Arrow approach. And we'll be really seeking to integrate a complete new range of supervisory tools. Peer analysis and stress testing will play an important part of our assessment of firms. And we will also be very much looking to detect whether a firm is an outlier and whether this is something we need to actually factor into our sectoral analysis. And we'll be passing this information up to the Financial Policy Committee. To conclude by touching on the Financial Policy Committee, you may be aware that the Bank of England has established an interim committee and it has already met in June and September. The purpose of this interim committee has been very much to allow the bank to road test its operation before it see, receives the, the formal mandate in 2013. Much of, um, of this detail I know has already been published um, on terms of regulatory reform. And I do recognise that really what you're looking for from your trade bodies is two pages to say, well, what does this really mean for me? Unfortunately, today we are not at the point where we can actually provide that clarity of information. But hopefully this forum will enable you to answer the questions and leave it with a really up-to-date perspective. Thank you very much.